Hello everyone! This is Haunted by History and I am Natalia from No Productions team. I am now standing on the grounds of the famous Kashmir Castle or the sign of the Takahe. It is overlooking Canterbury Plains like a haunted castle of Gothic tales. It is a lovely cafe now, but we have heard some strange rumors and decided to do a bit of investigative journalism. And who is better to consult on the matter than the local ghost hunter and history buff William Langford of Langfords? Mr. Langford. Oh, call I, me William. Ah, uh, William. Are you happy to share your knowledge and your special equipment for our investigation today? Well, it is a little early in the day. Uh, you see, it's still daylight and the forces of darkness are yet to be exalted, as Sherlock Holmes would say. <laughs> oh. Well, while we are waiting for them to get uh, all exalted, uh, can you tell us something about the history of this castle? Oh, of course, although it's not a castle as such. Um, Harry L, the person who built it, probably thought of it in those terms, but, and it is one of the finest examples of neo-Gothic architecture in Christchurch. But uh, isn't it also a bird sanctuary? Uh, should we expect to see any, any takahes uh, around, around the place? Uh, no such no. luck. Uh, although Just... uh, the name is perhaps a little um, confusing. Um, uh, perhaps what Harry L was trying to do was, was develop his avian theme. If you think about the other projects he has in the Port Hills, the, the sign of the Kiwi, mm -hmm. the sign of the Bellbird, mm -hmm. uh, the sign of the Takahe, mm -hmm. the sign of the Pack Horse. <laughs> no, perhaps not. Uh, but, you see, Harry L. was an early conservationist. Um, in his day, the Takahe, the bird, was in fact thought extinct. It hadn't been seen since 1948. Or to put it another way, since 1948, there had been no sign of the Takahe. <laughs> Perhaps he's feeling nostalgic about things that he felt were, were lost and gone forever. Well, uh, such as the, the world of Arthurian myths and folklore and, and uh, native species such as the Takahe. Do you know what? What? This is rather spooky. Oh. In 1934, just after Harry L's death, the sign of the Takahe was left uh, abandoned and unfinished. They couldn't complete the project. But then, in 1948, the Takahe the bird was rediscovered alive and well in Fjordland. <laughs> Hooray! The same year that the sign of the Takahe the building was completed. Ooh. Uncanny. Now, if we continue round to the uh, northwest facade of the... Have you seen that? What? Uh, uh, the, the shape in the window, no? just over there. Uh, no, uh, but let me consult my uh, psychic and uh, equipment and, and, and powers. No, there's nothing there at the moment. Um, now, what was I saying? It, is it a spoon? This is a scientific and psychic device for measuring the paranormal activity of the area. It is also a protection against ill-tempered ghosts. It's pure silver, you see. <laughs> you can't go past a, a Victorian silver spoon. Mm. You were talking about the facade. The facade? Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, the facade over here, you can see, is reminiscent of, an, uh, of a manor house of, of the 14th century in England. Uh, you can just imagine a, a moat, a torchlight, uh, uh, feasts, crushing your enemies. Hiding from your enemies, running away from your enemies, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but why have one architectural style when you can have three? <laughs> Follow me and I will show you the Baroque Tower. Yes? Here it is. The southwest corner features a 17th century style Baroque Tower with some lovely crenellation. Uh, that's the uh, battlements. <laughs> Ah, there were several sightings of a medieval knight who was sta standing right over there when the moon is full. Did he present with a warlike visage? The, the, the warlike what? Wa it's Hamlet. Act, um, is it the same knight every time? Well, I guess it's hard to say with his visor on. Oh, a visor. Mm-hmm. Don't like the sound of that visitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'll, I'll consult my, uh, my equipment. Mm -hmm. 
there has been something here, but it's gone now. Is it safe to proceed? Yes. Let us be brave. There is a Dickensian Inn on the other side. Right. But I thought it was a bus stop. Uh, all will be revealed. This is where it all started. In 1920, the first stage of the Sire of the Takahe was opened. Yes, exactly 100 years ago. The Tram Terminus Rest House. And it stood right here. But it was more than just a tea room. Mr. L was inspired by the coaching days of the 18th century and by the stories of Charles Dickens. He wanted to recreate the romance of the coaching era. You know, the, the, the cosy fire, the, the, the warm beer, or in this case, the, the hot tea, and the mysterious travellers. Oh, sounds like an invitation for hauntings. Oh, indeed. Dangerous thing, imagination. It can conjure up all sorts of ghosts from the past. But I, I think I need more data. Um, uh, shall we go inside? Oh, uh, but before we do, um, I'd like to do a little um, protection ceremony, just, just in case. Okay. Just, okay. You do that. <clears throat> oh. Just take oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are, are we all protected now? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, let us proceed inside. Let us proceed, yes. We have heard numerous reports that this Sudapama over there was seen walking around all by itself just before dawn on a regular basis. So I, I wonder if you could check for any signs of recent uh, walking activities. Uh, before I answer, mm -hmm. can I just point out something I just realized? Uh. Here's the Sudapama. Yes. There is the Brota. Yes. Sudapama. The visitation on the tower, of course. It explains everything. Not necessarily. Let me consult my psychic device. Oh. Yeah, there is definitely some strong energy in this area. Ah. I don't think it has anything to do with the suit of armor. It seems to be more to do with. No? Oh, with this portrait of, of Mr. L himself. Oh. I'm not at all just surprised because he was a controversial figure in his day. He, mm -hmm. he was an MP, he was a, mm -hmm. uh, a local councillor, he played for Canterbury. Mm -hmm. Or to his friends, he was miserable, but to his enemies, he was an impractical dreamer, or sometimes they used to call him much worse than. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you see, his problem was that he, he kept getting into debt. And uh, by the 1930s, the uh, sign of the Takahe itself was in deep financial crisis. So, what did he do? Oh, ah, yeah. Follow me. Uh -huh. Follow me. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Down. Uh -huh. yeah. This is the signature wall. It was signed by many of those who gave their energies to create the sign of the Takahe. And you can still feel those energies in the room here about us. Back in 1932, Mr. L was in deep financial trouble, but ironically, it was the Great Depression that came to his rescue. Hooray! Some people estimate that 30% of the workforce was unemployed. A lot of skilled workers were forced to do soul-destroying manual labour. But in a clever manoeuvre, Harry L convinced the government to give him over 300 skilled craftsmen to work on the side of the Take and his other Port Hills developments. They were delighted to use their imagination and skills and were nicknamed Ill's Angels. I kid you not. And here are their signatures proudly displayed. And here is the signature of the man himself, Mr. H.G.L. Originator. This is the armorial room and you can feel it vibrating with the energies of the past. And is it any surprise? Look about you. There's coats of arms, the stained glass windows, the, the carvings in the stone. You, you feel as if you've gone back in time to the 14th century England. But all this was actually created in Christchurch in the 1930s. It's all very confusing. To 
Just look at that wood carving. Scottish coat of arms. The Windsor Herald expressed his admiration for the wealth of detail shown in its design. If only he'd seen the rest of the carvings. Were they made by some special machines? No, no, that wasn't the money. They had to improvise. Oh, much of the stone was hand chiseled with primitive tools. The, the heavy carry beams and the ceilings and framing the panelling were salvaged from a bridge over the Hurunui River. The panelling itself, believe it or not, was actually cut from old packing cases. That's amazing. Such was the level of skill of these Canterbury craftsmen. And, and you could still feel their spirits in the room with you, ever present. As you can see, our expert has proven that this place has a life of its own. It is haunted by the past, the artistry and the passion of Harry L., the creator of the sign of the Takahe, and his angels. Their haunting is not dangerous, though. You should come and visit them sometime. <laughs>